All right. I am here with Cornell, Cornell Spikowski. I did it. Yes, um, Cornell Spikowski. Uh, Cornell Spikowski. She is a um, nurse midwife at Willow Midwives, which is where I, I had prenatal care for both of my kids. And then I delivered my second there. And so Cornell did most of my prenatal care with midwifery. You never know who's going to be there when you deliver. And I guess with MDs too. So um, she didn't get to be there for the delivery, but we're going to talk about uh, midwife stuff. Yeah. And um, just as one small correction, I'm actually a certified professional midwife, which is a little bit different than a certified nurse midwife, which we will talk about today. Um, And that's one of the cool things about it. Freestanding birth center is that it can be a mixed practice of both certified nurse midwives and certified professional midwives. Um, The biggest difference between us is our scope of practice and our training. So certified professional midwives um, often come from home birth um, backgrounds or birth center backgrounds, whereas nurse midwives can practice in hospitals, freestanding birth centers, and home birth. Um, And that's the practice that I work in is a mixed practice. Um, Right now, we have majority certified professional midwives working, um, doing call, attending births, and doing prenatal visits. But we also have a couple certified nurse midwives that um, are doing call attending births um, and doing annual exams, stuff like that. So like I was saying, the biggest difference is scope of practice um, and nurse midwives have the ability to practice in the hospital, have the ability to uh, um, write prescriptions and manage prescriptions on a very basic level. Um, certified professional midwives are not allowed to work in hospitals and uh, they're not allowed to write prescriptions. We can give medications, but that's kind of the big difference um, between the two um, different types of midwives. There's also a third type of midwife that is not yet legal in Minnesota. It's the certified midwife, and that is in the same kind of scope of practice as the certified nurse midwife. They have to uh, pass the same exam um, and have similar scope of practices. That is very confusing to my brain, and I didn't even know what like existed, honestly. Yeah, I mean, for most people, they don't even know the difference. Um, They're just like, oh, you're a midwife? Cool, awesome. Um, But yeah, my training specifically was mostly in the home birth setting. I did do a year at a freestanding birth center. um, And then once I got licensed and was practicing as a midwife, I for about a year I worked in home birth setting. And then I came over to the freestanding birth center here in Minnesota, which we have actually several, which is pretty nice for folks to be able to have options. Minnesota is a pretty like community out of hospital birth friendly state, which is really nice because folks then have options, right? Mm -hmm. Um, It's good to have options when it comes to something so intimate and powerful as labor and birth. Um, So yeah, just a little bit of a difference there. So that's good good to know. I don't know. Uh, Okay. So that being said, will you tell me Will you tell me the major difference between a, um, like what you will, would see with birth with like an MDPA hospital sort of setting versus midwifery, whether, um, I'm looking at my, my questions here and how mm-hmm. I want to phrase it. Um, let's just do midwifery in general, if you yeah. can. Um, in terms of like, what's the difference between midwifery and then like being under care from like an MD, a PA. Yeah. Care because I want to talk to you about like birth center versus other midwifery types of care, but let's do MD versus midwifery care as a whole. Yeah. So I would say the big difference is probably scope of practice. Like it's like, that's going to be like the opening of the doors of the big difference. Obviously physicians and physician's assistants, they have bigger scope of practice. Um, physicians or OBs can do surgery. So that's where we get um, in line with like C-sections, stuff like that. Um, they have bigger scope of practice in terms of prescribing medications. But when it comes specifically to like birth and um, prenatal care, the big difference is going to be um probably time with your provider. Honestly, if you have a midwife, even in the hospital setting, oftentimes you're getting a little bit more time with that provider and you get to know them a little bit better. Um, The other thing, the other big difference too is 
um, how big the practice is and how many providers are in that practice. And it will differ from every hospital system, but a lot of OBs work in a larger practice. Um, and you don't always know who's going to be at your birth in terms of, is it going to be the person you've been seeing prenatally? Um, another big difference too is, are you seeing the same person every single time you're going in for me prenatal care at the hospital under physician or PA? Um, or is there one specific provider? Now, when it comes to like the birth center that I work at, we do have a group practice. So you might rotate through the midwives. Some people have preferences for seeing a certain midwife at their prenatal visits. Um, we do work in a practice where you don't know which midwife is necessarily going to be at your birth. Um, some practices do it a little bit differently. Um, but we do give more time to our clients, right? Our basic prenatal visits are 45 minutes. Whereas if you're in the hospital with a physician, you're maybe getting 15 minutes, sometimes a little bit longer, but I feel like time is not always on your side when you're seeing a physician in the hospital. Um, and time is so important to get to know your clients and to get to know your provider, right? Um, for me personally, and I think a lot of other midwives, it's really important that we get to know our clients and that, and that our clients can get to know us. Um, I want folks to know my humor, my personality. I want to know my clients as well. I want to know what your partner's name is. I want to know what your other kids' names are. I want to know what you like. I want to know what your desires are for your prenatal and birth experience. Um, and physicians don't always get a chance to get that deep into you as a human, right? Um, because they don't have the time. Because um, they have to say, okay, how's your baby? How's your health? All right, see you next time. Um, so I would say that's probably one of the big differences. Um, and then of course, outcomes too, right? Um, in terms of, are you going to have the outcome that you desire for your birth? There are more interventions at the hospital and doctors feel more comfortable using those interventions, especially when it comes down to time. Um, whereas in a freestating birth center setting um, under midwifery care, um, we have interventions that we can use, but they're not as interventive as like a physician would, would use. Like we don't have pain medications like they would in the hospital, like epidurals, stuff like that. Um, and we also, we're experts in physiologic birth, right? That's what we support. That's what our main goal is. Whereas physicians are too, but they're also experts at surgical birth. Um, and so they come in with both approaches when it comes to that. Um, so I would say that's probably the biggest difference um, in terms of what are you going to see when you see a doctor and what are you going to see when you see a midwife. And with your um, first pregnancy, did you start off care at the birth center or were you seeing a physician at all? Uh, we weren't trying to get pregnant. So <laughs> we I had a, I had a provider that I had yeah. honestly just established care with and she did yeah. do some like family practice stuff. And so I was like, yeah. oh, I guess I should go see somebody. Yep. And then we started like um, interviewing or whatever, like looking at different birth centers. Um, so I probably had a few visits at, it was just North Memorial and then okay. probably 20 weeks or something we ended up choosing. I feel like that's pretty common, especially with first babies. And especially if you don't know about like midwives, like, all right, I guess I just need to start care somewhere. And then people start thinking, hmm, is this the care that I want? What type of birth experience do I want? And then people start seeking out you know, different, different environments, different type of providers. I only ask because it's always, it's interesting to see like from first pregnancy to second pregnancy, like how your care started um, and what differences you, like how you approached pregnancy and how different it was in terms of, you know, being able to reflect back on that experience. Um, so yeah, thanks for sharing. Well, it's, yeah, it's so nice too, with the second time, it's like, mm, I don't have to make a decision of where I want to go. And like, unless you had a bad experience with where you delivered your first, but it's like, right. great. I know where we're going to have a pediatrician visit. I know where we're going to do our prenatal care and delivery. So like, box is checked. Yeah. Um, well, that being said, so, and I, this is something I don't understand that well. And, and this, I guess, is probably part of the the nurse midwife versus the midwife professional or whatever. Yep, certified professional. <laughs> CPM and CNM. <laughs> okay. Um, like, what, is, what does midwifery care look like in the hospital? <clears throat> yeah, that's a really good question um, because it is a little bit different. Um, again, time is the big thing. Midwives in the hospital are still... Um, 
constricted to the time. Sometimes you can get a little bit longer visits with them up to like half hour with them, but oftentimes it's about 15 minutes. Um, the other thing too, is that they're caring for a lot more clients than um, in terms of like how many people they're seeing a day and how many people they're caring for in labor. Whereas in a freestanding birth center, um, we do have like a large client group, but it's much, much smaller than in the hospital setting. Like we cap our clients every month so that we don't have too many clients going into labor all at one time because mm -hmm. we only have one midwife on call at one time. And that's pretty, from my experience, a lot of midwives in the hospital setting, a lot of practices will only have one midwife on call at a time, but they often have way larger practices. So they have a larger pool of midwives to cover shifts. Um, another difference too is a lot of times the midwives working in hospitals do 12 hour call shifts, whereas we do 24 hour call shifts at the birth center. Um, so the likelihood of you having the same midwife in the um, birth center setting for your entirety of your labor is pretty likely unless you're coming in at shift change. Um, and then the other thing too is that hospital based midwives have a little bit more tools when it comes to pain relief medications, they will oftentimes use a lot of those more physiologic things to help with pain relief and coping, but they also are able to, you know, call up the anesthesiologist and say hey, um, this person wants an epidural why don't you come on in. And also there are a lot less hands off some are more hands on than others but in my experience they they tend to be more hands-off, the nurses are the ones who are caring for the laboring client. Whereas in the birth center setting, the midwife is there with you. Like we are hands-on with you, um, if that's what you desire. We also utilize a lot more alternative ther therapies in the birth center setting. So homeopathy, herbs, um, other uh, things like massage, uh, physical therapy, chiropractic care, acupuncture, those type of things are always involved in kind of our recommendations for coping or even um, discomforts during pregnancy. Um, the other thing too is we are experts at water birth. Um, and every hospital is going to be a little bit different and every midwifery group is going to be different in terms of are you eligible for water birth or to labor in the water? But um, in our particular birth center that I work at, about 65% of our clients do deliver in the water, mo more desire to deliver in the water, but we also know that babies are born wherever they want to be born, and sometimes that they're born on land. Um, but we are experts in water birth. Like That is our main um, form of pain relief um, is hydrotherapy. Um, and that's kind of, I think, one of the big thing that sets us apart from other midwifery practices, particularly in the hospital setting is that like, yeah, we're getting you in the tub when you're in labor. That's a really good way to help with coping through those contractions. Um, so I'd say that's probably the big difference. Um, scope of practice is also going to be, you know, as I've mentioned, is going to be one of those things too, because all the uh, midwives that are working in the hospital are certified nurse midwives. Um, and to kind of expand on that too, because I think I didn't do the best job of explaining in terms of like training and stuff is that they are nurses first and then they become midwives, whereas certified professional midwives are direct entry midwives. They do their training and become midwives. So they have that nursing experience too in their background. Um, and so they come from a little bit more of a medical approach, not always, I'm not trying to say that uh, midwives working in hospitals are always more medical, but they have that training to be more medical and they can be more medical if they need to be. Um, yeah, I would say that's probably the biggest, biggest differences between okay. hospital based midwives and out of hospital based midwives. Um, well, I guess that being said, will you, um, in summary, tell me like why a person would want to choose a, a freestanding birth center. I'm not talking about home birth. I mean, I guess you right. could choose that too, but um, a hospital-based midwife and then like MD, hospital-based generic care. Yeah, I think the biggest thing that people desire when they're looking at a freestanding birth center is fewer interventions um, because we just don't have access to the same interventions that they do in the hospital. Um, so a lot of people that come to us at our birth center, they don't want an epidural. They don't want medications involved in their labor. Um, they want more time with, with their midwives. Um, but for folks who maybe want an epidural and want access to an epidural, then the hospital is a really great option for you. 
The other thing too is what are, what are your risk factors? So in an out of hospital setting, you have to remain low risk to be a client. Um, whereas in the hospital, if you have those higher risk factors, like someone who has type one diabetes, so they're born or in childhood, they it's found out that they have diabetes, um, certain other certain medical conditions too um, would mean that you're higher risk and that you're the best place for you to be giving birth is in the hospital setting in case those interventions are needed. Um, but most folks that are coming to us or trying to explore options in terms of being in a freestanding birth center is they want fewer interventions. They want to be able to incorporate some of those alternative therapies that, that I mentioned, chiropractic care, pelvic floor, acupuncture. Um, they want that involved in their care, whereas physicians don't always incorporate that into their care. Some do, um, really depends on their training as well. I, I've definitely met physicians that are like, oh yeah, love chiropractic care. Oh yeah, try this like, uh, like papaya enzymes for heartburn, stuff like that. Like some physicians are more well-versed in, in uh, recommending those alternative therapies, but um, for sure in an out-of-hospital setting, like that's what we have. So that's what we recommend. Um, so that's probably the biggest difference is, or the reason why folks would choose a freestanding birth center is fewer interventions and then water birth too. Like that is another reason why folks will choose to come to us is like they want a water birth. Um, their hospital that they were being seen at doesn't allow water birth or they don't allow, they'll allow you to labor in the water, but you can't deliver in the water. We have fewer restrictions when it comes to who is eligible. I mean, Basically, if you're in, in our care, you are eligible to give birth in the water um, because we only take low risk clients. So that also means that you have to have as a client have a bigger buy in into your health and your education when it comes to like prenatal care and um, what your desires are around labor. Like your buy in has to be a little bit little bit more than if you're under physician care, because we want you to be healthy. We want you to connect with your body. We want you to figure out what, what are your desires? What are your preferences for birth? Um, and we respect that and we want that. And that's not always um, necessarily considered in the hospital setting. Um, and people just want to be treated like humans, right? Especially when it comes to um, growing a tiny human. They want to be seen as a person, as an individual, and not just a number. And sometimes folks can feel kind of lost in, the, in a bigger hospital system in terms of like, is my provider actually seeing me as an individual who has specific needs, um, who has a like a specific background? Um, and we are afforded that in an out-of-hospital setting in a freestanding birth center because we have more time with our clients. So we get to know you on a personal level. Um, and I think that's probably one of the biggest biggest reasons why folks would choose a freestanding birth center over hospital birth or over like physician care. Now, some physicians will work in like a, in a clinic setting, but then also will like deliver in a hospital. So that's kind of nuanced as well. Same with some other like midwifery practices, they'll see you in a clinic, but you'll be delivering at a different space. Whereas at the freestanding birth center, that's where you go to your prenatal visits. That's where you're coming in for your labor. That's where you're coming in for your postpartum visits. Um, and some freestanding birth centers too also will have like a chiropractor in house or have like an acupuncture in house. We don't where I'm working at, but um, I have worked at birth centers that do have other those other alternative therapies available, which is pretty cool. Kind of like a one stop shop. Yeah, that is cool. I never thought about that actually, but that is true. Yeah, it's a good option and it's uh, awesome. I mean, when I was a student, I worked at a birth center that had a chiropractor in house. So when we had like some stuck labors or um, babies that were positioned not optimally, we'd say like, hey, come on over, adjust this person, which mm -hmm. is always the good tool to have. So. Yeah, Dr. Jesse's attended a few births and it is crazy. The stories I hear, I guess, of like how yes. it just like makes things. It makes a happen. huge difference. Um, yeah, I love it. So we also have some chiropractors that will come to the birth center occasionally and adjust folks in labor, but those are really special ones that will be like, yeah, I'll come in <laughs> in between visits, what have you. So cool. Well, thank you for your time and answering my questions. Cause I learned stuff too. Cause I yeah. didn't know all these things either. Yeah. I mean, midwifery is cool. I'm also happy to chat more about it. If you have more questions that like pop up, um, 
but yeah, I mean, obviously I'm a big proponent for out of hospital birth. I think it's super important that folks have that option, especially if they are low risk and they want fewer interventions or they want a water birth. It's a great option. I mean, you of all people know that it's an excellent. I was going to say that being said, I wanted, I asked, I had to deliver Dax in the hospital because I had to be induced and I asked if I could deliver or like labor in the water. They're like, well, you're going to deliver in the water. I'm like, literally have no idea. How would I know that? <laughs> I don't know if I will like the water. I don't know. They're like, yeah. well, you're not going to deliver. You can't have the water. I'm like, okay. And our deliveries were very similar. Dax and Remy, my oldest and my baby, like the way that the whole thing progressed. And my husband, like I knew this already, but my husband was like shocked. He's like, that was so much more chill and calm with the midwives. Like I delivered both on the toilet. The first was kind of accidental. The second was more of a choice. <laughs> yep. It's like, you turn the lights off. She just like had a flashlight and like, I bled a lot The at both of them. The, it was like 10 people in my room in the hospital. Everyone's freaking out. Mm -hmm. I'm like, fine. And then at the birth center, uh, she was just like, okay, I think you're, you're bleeding a lot. So let's just like get you over to the bed. Yep. <laughs> it was just like way more chill and way more chill and fewer staff, um, which has its pros and cons, right? If emergencies do pop up, we have fewer staff, but that's also the beauty of it is that you're not going to have 10 people in the room when you're delivering, um, and we tend to handle emergencies pretty calmly, which makes other, which makes the client feel more calm, right? Yeah. Uh, we communicate effectively, but we're calm about it. Um, and that's a really big difference. And I think people enjoy that calmness because it really does make an impact on your memories of your birth experience too, not just your experience in that moment, but your memories of it. Um, so yeah, I'm glad that you got a different experience-ish. Well, I mean, being in the, um, at the birth center for your, for Remy. Um, yes, I was glad because I uh, hope for that to be our last. And I was like, I got the experience that I wanted to have. So yes. it was really great. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks for your time. Yeah. Thanks for inviting me and um, see you around. <laughs>